follow me. And before we got the truck loaded, we had uh, busted the heister. We had spread unbundled lumber all over the yard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We finally get what we got to do. And I find out that he had been there two days longer than me. And so anyway, that was my training. Uh, but when I met Harold, he had that blue 442. Remember that car? And it had red line tires, remember that? And he drove the piss out of that car. I mean, he, I thought he was a boat dude. But later I found out he was really ill. Uh, but anyway, later on, after we were truck riding for a while, uh, they came to us the same day and they said, do you, uh, do you guys have time? And we said, well, yeah, I think we got time. So you guys come to work tomorrow and you're going to be sealed. Now, we didn't know a molly bolt from a 16-penny nail, but they put us in the, in the uh, yard there. So anyway, we were terrible salespeople. We were the worst. We didn't know anything, but we knew the mention of her, so that was it. So one day, Harold finds an old pair of boots <laughs> in the yard. Now, the boots, now, back then, we had the, we had the panel display uh, out in this uh, walkway, uh, and the bathrooms were right there, and then we had all the panel display there right off the showroom. And we had this guy that worked there forever, Earl Short. Remember him, Mike? So Earl Short, like, ran the salespeople. And uh, at any rate, Carol finds an old pair of boots. And so the men's room had a one-stall one bathroom. Okay? So Harold takes the boots, and he walks in there, and he, he puts the boots in front of the toilet, and he reaches over, and he locks the door. So he, he comes back in the show, he goes, he tells me what he goes, just, just watch. This is going to take a while, but just wait for this. So anyway, old Earl's out there, and he's showing this guy some lumber, and the guy down you know, these panelings, and he's flipping this and flipping that, and the guy goes, you know, you're going to have to excuse me for just for a minute. i got to go to the bathroom. So he comes in the bathroom, and he looks there, and he tries the door, and it's locked. So he comes back out, and he's looking at more stuff. He's about another three or four or five minutes. And he says, excuse me just one, one more time. And he goes back in and things like the game. He looked in the ring, he sees the boots. So this goes on like three or four times over about a 25 minute period. Finally the guy's like dancing around over there with Earl and all that stuff. And he says, man, I don't know what I gotta do. Maybe I gotta go to the ladies room, but there's been a guy in there for, he's been there forever. He must be really sick. Earl goes in there and he knocks on the door. Hey, hey. So the guy, he looks under there, he sees the boots, he looks over there, and there's the pair of boots. <laughs> so the guy, so girl reaches over, he unlocks the door, the guy goes in there, and he, I mean, from the from the lumber, he's like pulling out, and he's, you're clearing out, the guy is like ripping his pants down, he goes in there, girl comes in the showroom, and he goes, you two, you two, I know you, yeah. So anyway, um... I had a wonderful time with Harold at Wix, and of course it continues on over years. I left town, went back to school, came back uh, a few years later, had a desk job. So uh, I bought this condo out um, at Gulf Sand, just for you those of you who know this, just north of the Public Beach. This is 1979. Harold had the, uh, no, he, I mean, he had, you said, as, as this is true, he owned he uh, started uh, just about 20 businesses. He was the best entrepreneur I ever known. My my personal favorite was Ewing Steakhouse. Oh yeah. Now that was a fun deal. That was it was a for those of you who don't know or remember, it was a cook your own steak place, and it was the most social restaurant that I've ever been to because what you did, he had this big pit. You brought your own steak. You cooked your own steak. They brought you all the rest of the stuff, and it was just a really fun social. But at any rate, uh, he had, uh, he was at the lumber yard. So uh, we decided that we were going to throw this pig roast at, at the beach condo. So um, I had come back, I was working for Wilbur Boyd at the time, and uh, we were going to go buy these pigs. Now we had just attended the pig roast. That's all we knew about. We didn't know, and we didn't know shit from apple sauce. So we go, and we're going to go buy these pigs. So I, I go by, and Harold and I, we're going to go get these pigs. We're going to go buy the pigs, and we're going to take the manatee meats on 64, 
And they're going to slaughter the pigs, and we're going to take them, and we're going to have these pig ribs like Saturday the next day. So anyway, we go. So I go to pick up Harold at the at uh, the Village at the at the uh, at the uh, hardware store. So Harold at the time had that old blue Datsun little pickup truck. So that was our plan. Now I got a I have a bet. I have a tie and a bet. Okay, and I'm only going to set this up for a later comment. But so Harold and I are there, and we're going to take the thing and. Jim, I wish Jim Anderson, who's out of town, I wish he was here because this is on him too. He happens to be in the in the uh, hardware store, and he says, "We tell him what we're going to do." He goes, "You dumb shit." He says, "He says those pigs going to jump out of the truck." <laughs> and we go, we go, well, yeah, they probably will. He goes, 